Hey everyone, my name is Angelo and today is November 22nd, 2021. It is Monday and today I have another Ethereum giveaway as well as a project review, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're not gonna be looking at a project that that is about to launch. We're gonna look at a project that has already launched and what should we be looking for there and how do they go up against my checklist again? So in this project, we're gonna be talking about the Lazy Lions. So before we get started, let's go through a quick disclaimer. All opinions and information presented in this video are based on my research and standards I personally have set for the projects. This does not mean the project is good or bad or that it will fail or succeed. I'm usually not compensated or sponsored by the projects I review. If I am sponsored or compensated, I'll let you know. Note that investing, trading, or participating in NFTs are speculative in nature, and you should not use this video, blog, or podcast, past, current, or future episodes as financial advice. Also note that by the time you read, listen, or hear this information about the project or my opinions, they may have changed. To get updated information on the project, please contact the project itself or you can reach out to me direct message on twitter link in the description please do your own research okay so let's get started in with the lazy lions now i want to say that it's interesting and more of a gamble to me not that i don't think it's even speculative to go into a project that has already launched that seems to be successful it's more speculative, in my opinion, to be going into a project pre-launch because you just don't know what's going to happen. Is it all hype? Is it real? So there's a lot of risk at stake, but an established project, that is completely different because we can see that one, it was not a rug. Two, we can see if they went into, um, they're, they're taking off and how are they working now, now that things have settled a little bit? And I chose the lazy lines because it came across my desk, um, <laughs> uh, quote unquote, across my desk. But um, I thought it was a good opportunity to take a look at one. And then what are the things we'd want to look at now that it's successfully launched that would make it something that would intrigue us to be part of and invest our money in? So going back to one of my other videos uh, or podcasts or blogs, I talked about how there are three types of individuals, um, well, we'll say three types of individuals post-launch that we're probably going to see. We're going to see those who are in there just for the community. We're gonna see those who are there because they expect to get a return on their money and they're in there for both reasons is the third category. And I'm gonna talk about um, all those that would, I guess, be something that you would be looking at as an individual going in there. So I'm not gonna assume which category you're going in there at, but I'm going to present this as, um, that, that should satisfy either, either direction you're looking at. So let's talk about the first thing I look at when I go into any Discord um, or any place there is some sort of a place for people to gather. I'm looking for places where people gather, not like a hit or miss like uh, Instagram or a Facebook, something like that. I want a place where I can see interaction um, like a continuous flow because that flow is important. It, does, it could be on Clubhouse, it could be on Twitter Spaces, Discord, somewhere where I can feel the flow of the community. And when as soon as I go in, first impressions are important. How do I feel when I go in there? And if you're looking for a community, this is your first question too is, what am I getting myself into? Is this a cool community or not? So when I went in there, first impression was really good. Everyone was helpful. They, they helped get me orientated. Um, unlike one of the other projects that I kind of jumped into trying to look at it from a post-launch, 
totally night and day. I was given the roadmap. I asked about the roadmap. They told me where we were on the roadmap. So the community was very informed and uh, very helpful. Everybody was still um, motivated and really energetic. So right off the bat, I felt really comfortable going in. And um, which also tells me that new people, not just me coming in, are going to feel good right away. And that means, hey, I feel good. I'm gonna, I'm already thinking, yeah. Because if you think about it, if somebody's already going into the project, they're either thinking, yes, I'm going to invest my money in this project, or I've heard good things about this uh, community, so I wanna go into it. So going in, they're already thinking about purchasing or being part of the community. If they get past that community welcome, we'll say, and they come off with a good impression, you've already now pushed them to the next level. And this project did that. And what was interesting was on 11-18-2021, there was 116,000 members. And fast forward to four days later, we have 129,000 members on Discord. So the community is growing and things are happening. Now, the next thing I like to look at, and I've talked about this before, I kind of go through the BI triangle that uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about. So I'm going through each one here. And the next step was the mission. And this is something I need to get from the leaders because I want to know what they're looking for. When I look at a community member, I know what they're looking for, which is uh, those three categories. Which category do they fit in? And does this community do, fulfill that um, what they're looking for but what is it that the the leaders are looking for and unfortunately the leaders are busy and I did try to reach out to them they did not respond back to me um, which I can understand with 129,000 folks in there maybe they're getting a lot of debit um, debit <laughs> direct messages and getting something from me um, maybe seemed like another you know uh, direct message out there but uh, they they did not respond to me but I wanted to hear it from them I did sit in one of their Twitter spaces that they had and uh, they had I believe it was um, uh, nine lioness nin lioness in there and they were talking about um, the next steps for the lions and everything and everybody seemed nice everybody seemed good and i'm glad that they were continuing to do amas because that's important to make sure things are still um, people have questions new people have questions and keeping things going um, they have four leaders assure nine nin lioness and and leon and lion um, and I can say I've I checked in on Discord and Assure and Nine were very active on Discord. And we can see Assure doing announcements mostly, but he's also in there. Um, I shouldn't say he, I, I don't know what gender they are um, or prefer to be referenced as, but um, I know that they do go in there and that they do uh, communicate and do respond to the community and try to keep it uplifted. Same with nine. Uh, I didn't. Um, same thing. There, there. They seem nine seems to be more of the community manager. I could be wrong, um, but uh, they act. They're very active and they promote the lions. I go on the Twitter's accounts of all four of them, and they are dedicated to the lions. Um, even Nin Lioness and Ann Lion they are promoting the lions. I don't see any other tweets unless it's referencing lions. So these four individuals are dedicated to the lions. They even go up to the real life meetings, which they just had one. Uh, I think it might've been Chicago the other day. And so that could have been another reason why they didn't communicate with me. When I reached out, they were uh, having a live event and it seemed very fun, uh, something I'd w like to be part of at some point in the future and uh, it just seemed like a really good crowd all around the community and the leadership moving on to the team uh, there was um, watts and they're active and supportive and encouraging ar ar on discord 
who uh, interacted with me the most of the team around uh, the Lions. And they answered my questions, most of my questions. I didn't get all my questions answered, but the community stepped in. So I'm assuming that what the information that I got from the community, AR was just stepping back and saying, uh, if there was something wrong, I'm assuming that they would have stepped in and said something. So some of the things that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, especially when we get into the cash flow and the finances of this project, uh, a lot of it I had to make some assumptions based on what the community gave me. Uh, so some of it could be wrong. Looking at the five mods, um, I do, haven't really talked to them very much. Uh, again, most of my conversation was with AR on Discord. And, but they're very active. So I went in there, I checked how active they are. All five of them are pretty active within the, the Discord and chatting with the community. So overall, although I didn't get the mission, I do see that the leadership is eager to keep the community going. They're doing AMAs, Twitter spaces, and they're talking about the future and they're getting deep. There was a question asked on Discord that was really talking about the authenticity of some of the partnerships that they were having and what was the true, uh, let's say, were we really analyzing the impact of having some collaborations? And they really took that question, which was very good, in my opinion, to see them really break it down and not just brush it off or pass it because it was in the Discord, but the meeting was in uh, the Twitter spaces. So it was interesting that it was picked up, brought into the conversation as to who are the Lions going to be in the, in the end um, and how are they going to move forward. And they were talking about one of their uh, uh, projects that they were working on with the community, and I'll get into that a little bit. Um, actually, we'll, we'll talk about the cash flow next. So cash flow. Now, some of these numbers could change. Some of it could be inaccurate because the source could be inaccurate. But this is what I got, and I'll tell you the source, and you can go with it from there. So we know that in, if there's no community, if there's no team, there's no direction, the rest of it can, is probably going to fall apart. And if we look at the BI triangle Robert Kiyosaki has, that's on the outside of the triangle. triangle. Um, the next step is cash flow. If there's no cash coming into the community, then the community is going to dwindle and all you'll have, and not that it's a bad thing, all you, but in the end you'll end up just having people hanging out in Twitter spaces and Discord, which could be a good thing, um, especially if that's what you're looking for. But if you're looking for the community to receive stuff like merch and giveaways and possibly, um, you know, substantiating your, your uh, investment into the project, without the cash flow, there is no financial, uh, we'll say, uplifting or anything to up, keep that project going financially speaking. So I went out to the website. I found that there was royalties of 5%. Um, I'm I couldn't tell what that, whether that was secondary market. I'm assuming that's the secondary market. So every secondary sale that they have, that means that they're going to have 5% put back into their pocket or the community's pocket. I went to Rarity Tool and um, the overall sales so far, and I did my research on 1120. So this is as of 112021. The overall sales was 18,227 Ethereum. The last seven days, according to Rarity, the last seven days of sales was 1,025 Ethereum. And the average price over the last seven days was 1.63 Ethereum. The number of owners was 4,735. I went to OpenSea and the supply out there, meaning how many tigers were out there to be sold was 10,106. The floor price according to OpenSea at that current time was 1.537. I went out to Etherscan. I got the community wallet. 
address. Not sure if it's the correct one. I got that from the a community member and nobody denied um, that it was or was not the correct one. But when I looked in that wallet, there was 66 ETH in the community wallet. And so based on all that information, I am able to do some calculations, which helps us understand what's going on with the community. And you can make your own, uh, let's say, uh, decisions, or again, this is not financial advice. This is just the information I pulled. This may give you some indication of whether or not financially this is something you want to put your money in. And of course, things can change. The seven day sales can change. So you, you have to go in there and do your own research. But based on all the information I just gave you, here's the calculations. The average sold, meaning the number of lines sold in the last seven days based on 1120 when I looked at rarity and some of the other uh, statistics I gave you were about 628 lions. The liquidation, which means that if we were to take the, the uh, community wallet and let's say that they decided to close down the project today and knowing that there's a certain amount of holders and the, and the, the project said, we're going to close today, but we're going to give everybody what's in the community wallet, that would come out to 0 0.013 Ethereum. The income per week, so this is based on the last days of sales, seven days of sales, and the royalties would come out, uh, the 5% royalties would come out to 51 ETH per week is what they're making. If we take that same calculation, the last seven days, and project it for a year, they would end up producing, um, with royalties, 2,665 Ethereum. The income per owner, if we break that down for the number of line holders out there, that's 0.56 Ethereum per owner. So if they were to give the 5% royalties back to the community directly as say dividends, um, we won't call it dividends, but I think that's the only thing I can uh, relate it to. But if they were to give that money back to the holders of the tokens, they would get 0.56 each. Um, which means that a return on investment, meaning based on the current floor price when I looked at it on OpenSea, would be 36%. And the years to break even would be about 2.7 years. So take that information as you will. And I think you can see that based on that, there's uh, um, definitely lines being sold. There's definitely money being made here with 66 ETH in the community wallet and 2,665 possible projected based on uh, last week or last Friday's numbers, we can see that uh, they, they are, are bringing in money to sustain the project and to sustain themselves. So uh, let's face it, I mean, the project owners don't wanna be doing this for free, I don't blame them. But uh, there's enough money here, in my opinion, to pass around to all the line holders. Um, so if you're thinking this project is going to die, as of right now, I would say that's probably not going to happen. Uh, if sales dries up, of course, of course, it's a different situation. But they have enough in there to keep the project going. All right, so that's the financials. We're going to jump back to communication because if you have the money to sustain the project, then if everything else goes wrong, if you have a good team, good mission, everything, and the, the finances are flowing through and things are breaking down everywhere else, we can fix it with money or in this next uh, layer, which is communication, making sure we communicate and keep transparency through the entire project is important. So how do the lines match up to that? They use the main apps, Discord and Twitter. Uh, they're doing, um, you know, Twitter spaces, like I said. They're still uh, communicating within Discord, posting on Twitter. Uh, so, I mean, that those are the main ones. They do real life meetups. Uh, they Last week they had the Chicago one, I think. They have four more coming up, real life meetups. So that's another way of uh, communicating and talking with them. 
and they have channels to dedicated to resolving issues. I think this is important uh, for projects to have because we need, there's going to be problems and we need a good way of handling those problems. And I believe the Lions have set up a good process here. They were having some uh, issues with their collectibles, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, and what that means to me is that uh, when there's an issue there, how do we handle it? People are directing them to a specific channel, which they can then get their answers. I took a look in the channel. It looks like communications going on there. And the team is very um, transparent about the issues and trying to let people know and compensate because there was a competition in there uh, with the collectibles. And they made some arrangements to kind of prolong the contest because of some of the technical issues. So again, I have nothing bad to say about the community or the leadership here. Really good. So communication seems very good. Everybody's doing um, all around through the team and everything. Let's talk about legal. This seems to be escaped by many different projects and I hope as they move along that they get more into uh, understanding the legal aspects of it because again when there's money people come after money if there's something that goes wrong people are going to come after the project and to protect the owners the project itself or the community and the members legal structures are important so I went out there and found out that this I couldn't find out much about it but they seem to be under the Tigers seem to be under a blockchain media LTD limited um, LTD so there is a legal entity there which makes me feel good and there is great copyright and privacy laws that are written on the website so that to me makes me feel good that they thought about that it's um, I read through all of it. It seems pretty legit, very solid. So to me, from a legal perspective, we can say I'm pretty satisfied. It's probably one of the best ones out there um, compared to the majority of the projects out there who aren't even considering the legal aspects. For instance, the copyrights of who, what an owner can do with the NFT is uh, just kind of mentioned in a lot of projects here they have a whole uh, page on their website dedicated to what rights the owners have and the um, legal entity have all right so now let's get into great we have uh, another aspect if you if you know the bi triangle i skipped the systems we're not going to get involved into the systems of the BI triangle because one, um, we don't need to get that deep into the project um, unless, unless we feel like we don't need to get that deep into the project unless we feel like they are uh, having problems. Then we may need to see how they're organized, but everything seems organized. Um, flowing very well so I'm not concerned about their systems and probably for most projects they're not even going to want to dive into those but uh, it is something as owners they should be aware of how they're going to operate to and I'll tell you why real quick not that this matters to you but real quick what matters to the uh, to the owners is their ability to streamline and move quicker because the better their systems are, the faster they can do things. And the faster they can do things, the more they can produce for the community and be more reactive. That's all I'll say about that. Okay, products. The last part of the BI triangle. So if you're getting in there and you want some perks and you, you want to know what you're getting with the lion, here's what you get. You get ownership of the art and you can use it commercially. And so that's a good thing to me. That is probably one of the, if you're into making an investment on your NFT, to me, this is great. One, you can take that art that has support because the project's up and running and to hold one point or above one ETH on a project right now is pretty good in my opinion. Um, 
what I what I like about it is that it's got a community behind it, 129,000. The art is pretty cool, if you ask me. Uh, of course, that's subjective. But if we if we look at what we can do with the art and use it commercially, that to me is a perk. I mean, I can create merch with it. I can, uh, you know, create a business around it. So if you really take time to look at the lion that you want to purchase, the lazy lion that you want to purchase, and you can relate to it in a commercial way, there's an opportunity right there. And what they're looking at to do with partnerships and things like that, it's only going to bring more exposure in my perspective. Let's talk about the roadmap. There, um, th there's going to be merch and certain traits, depending on which line you have, will get certain items for free, which to me means merch, you may have to still buy it even though you own a token. Um, at least that's what I derived from it. Web 2.0, so they're looking at branding and or they have branding and functional website. They're looking to make it a more interact, interactive website and use it really for branding. So they're looking at doing that. And they're also looking at a game, a play to earn lazy lying game. What that means, still a mystery, but they're planning on it. Now, I do have to caution here. Uh, I'm not saying that they can't do it, but I've heard from a lot of um, gaming NFT projects out there. It's not an easy thing. It requires a lot of resources, a lot of understanding, and even for those who've developed games before, trying to get into this market, say it's really deep. So I don't know what type of team they have that will pr produce this, but um, based on what they are doing currently do I think financially they could they could pull this off and get the right team yes I in my personal opinion based on their exposure and the amount of money that they pull in they would have their resources in order to pull a team together to create a game of course I don't really know that for sure because I myself don't know what it takes to create a game they are looking to get into sandbox and get an island on metaverse and it's a place for the lions to hang out. They have this bungalow dap, um, and you can put uh, three, let's say, and the bungalow is a wallpaper you can put on Twitter as your, uh, or your banner there for Twitter, and they put three spots that you can put three of your other tokens that you already own up there and have them in the, in the, in the bungalow. To me, that's a cool uh, thing. I'm not sure how other uh, projects feel about it, if they understand that that bungalow belongs to the Lazy Lions and their artwork is being displayed there. Um, but at the same time, um, I think it's a cool concept either way. And they're saying that they're going to be able to use this for um, a game and for something in the metaverse. Uh, so there's something that's going to happen with these bungalows in, in the future. They also have this thing called Roar Wards. And if you, it seems like more of a, they promote you for marketing their project, which is very brilliant in my perspective. So if you do a certain type of things on Twitter, like um, make your PFP a lion that you own, change your banner, um, there's like four criteria and you have to do three of the four and if you own a token, they um, disperse some Ethereum from what I gathered from the community. I didn't get this from anybody out there, but um, uh, from the team, but Ethereum gets transferred. Um, I'm not sure at what, at what intervals or how much, but Ethereum is transferred back for being rewarded for marketing their collection. Um, collectible starter pack. I know there's a lot to this project, uh, but I hope you understand that this is these are these are great things, um, and I, we we should really consider what we're getting when we do this. And Roar Wards, I think, is probably one of the coolest things that I've seen. These collector starter packs that I was talking about earlier. So it's a, they had a Thanksgiving theme, fitting for Thanksgiving. And what they're using them for is like you collect this pack and 
it's kind of interesting because they were talking about this in their Twitter space. They, they're using it as a marketing, um, a marketing tool as also a rewards tool. So what happens is you go in, you get these collectibles, right? And you get a starter pack. And the starter pack you get once you invite somebody into their Discord. That person gets a starter pack, you get a starter pack. Once you have those starter packs, you can collect more. And once you get the complete set, um, then what you can do is get some prizes. I don't know what those prizes are, but that's essentially what, what happens. So I, I believe they just did a Thanksgiving one. I don't know what their next set will be, but they're really looking at this project of using collectibles to... Um, I didn't go into the financials of the collectibles or the rewards, um, what impact that has. So that has not been taken into consideration when I talked about the cash flow. But it's interesting to see how they're using different types of marketing tools and techniques to get people in. And that's really important. And with that supportive community, uh, community there and a strong financials, uh, in my opinion, uh, you're you're looking at a good project here. Uh, so that's going to end up being my final analysis if you haven't got it yet. And then they have the Lion's Den, uh, which Lazy Lion's Den, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So what this is, is you go in and a whole bunch of people can uh, pitch a project that they want to produce. And of those projects, get that it's sort of like Shark Tank, but a little bit different. They're calling it the Lion's Tank or the Den uh, instead of a tank. Um, instead of Shark Tank, Lion's Den, <laughs> and which is pretty neat in my perspective. So you go in, you pitch your idea, and if they like the idea, the overall community likes the idea, then the Lazy Lions will support that project. And that is to be determined by the needs of that specific project. So there we go. That's pretty much now when I look at a project that has successfully launched and they're going, how, do, how am I going to assess or how do I think you should assess a project? Going through these things that I just looked at, to me, is what you need to be looking for. Will I change this, um, this checklist I have? Probably as I get better at asking uh, more and more questions, but I know what you're thinking, Angelo, how do I get my free Ethereum at this point? Well, I guess my question would be, um, let's see. I want to know that you paid attention. So let's go to uh, one of the cash flow questions. How about that? Based on the website, what are the Lazy Lions royalties that they're charging? Again, I don't know if it's correct, but what is the royalty fee. I think that one's kind of easy as, as you get used to this format because this is the first one I've done post live. Um, so there you have it, uh, your Ethereum giveaway. So answer this question, direct message me on Twitter and tell me the answer to what are the royalties for this project. And you'll have till 11 p.m. Friday, which again, or which is uh, the day after Thanksgiving, um, the 26th. So you have 11, uh, 11, 26, 2021. So November 26th, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when you have to let me know what are the royalties for the Lazy Lions. And just direct message me there and then you'll be entered in for a raffle of Ethereum giveaway. The Ethereum is 0 0.015 as usual right now. Um, and uh, yeah, just let me know and then I will choose the winner on Saturday. And good luck to you all for that. And until next time, it looks like I'm gonna be stepping out of the Ethereum blockchain and moving over to what I think is called WAX. Um, yeah, from here, I hope you have, if you're in the U.S. and you celebrate Thanksgiving uh, or the holidays for this week of some sort, I wish you happy holidays for the rest of the world. I look forward to talking to you next Monday. And until then, I will see you then.
talk to you then or see you then. I'm not sure which one. Um, yes.